Welcome to Sports Back Talk with Bowley and Ringer. And uh, well, we uh, we were back home at Looney's. Yeah, do, where where we usually do it after our week at uh, Bronco Arena due to the poor weather conditions and whatever else. And so uh, you were you were in Fargo on Saturday. Yes, and I was. Watched a little football, and then you came all the way back to uh, the falls to do the boys hockey game, a win, so it was a very good Saturday for you. I'm just dedicated to this whole International Falls media thing, you know, <laughs> the show, uh, the radio, it's just, uh, you know, uh, I have a lot of allegiance here to my fans. I, I, I hear you. The one or two and, that I do have. And, and I was going to say, it's a vast crowd. Thank God for so. a big family. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so what was more exciting, the, the Bison winning or the Broncos winning? Well, of course, uh, geez. Yeah, me on my spot because my brother-in-law and my nephews all watch the show. But I, I go with Allegiance for my hometown sure. Broncos. I mean, Absolutely. that was a, that was a good win for them. I didn't like their first period, but after the after that, they kind of must have been talked to by George and his staff and say, uh, "Let's quit screwing around and let's go play." Yeah, and second, second, and uh, third periods were definitely better than the first. And uh, yeah. speaking of seconds, the second line was uh, was a lot of fun to watch with the. Uh, uh, Jackson Germain and uh, Keen Gonzalez and Simon Palm. I had to think for a second. Sorry, Simon. Uh, they, they played well. Oh, I thought Palm, that was probably his best game. Uh, he was more involved, uh, hitting. Uh, he's, a, he's a bigger kid. He's, uh, his dad was had some bulk to him yeah. and could, uh, he's a good football player. And, and uh, But uh, he, he's got to uh, bring it up to the next level. He, he's going to be a key player for that team. And like I said on the radio the other day, I'm expecting at least 10 to 15 goals on him, and he got his first the other night, so I see him on a little run here in the next uh, couple of weeks. That whole line I see on, on a good run. So Yeah, the, the Bronco boys hockey team does have a whole week off here. They were played on Saturday. Their next game is on Saturday afternoon, the 16th, when they take on Kitson County Central. Yeah, uh, three o'clock game. So uh, we're not doing there. that game, are we? We are not doing that okay. game on the radio. That uh, was on the schedule and then got taken off the schedule. I One remember of those, that. Late decisions. So, uh, what did you think of the Bison? You, you told me, I think, something along the lines that nobody's going to touch them. Right. The way they played on Saturday, there will be a tough out. That, that's a good team, uh, both offensively and, and particularly defensively. They got uh, they got some horses. They, it's kind of fun watching how they interchange the players. Okay. They, they run about eight guys on the defensive line probably five back in the defensive backfield and probably another five more in the linebacker core. So uh, they do more interchanging than NFL teams do. I would think that's because they probably got more players, you know. Yeah, NFL's, NFL's limited. NFL's only yeah. got 53 players, yeah. so you might only have, what, four linebackers all together. Yeah, so. we'll get to that later about the Vikings were running out of offensive linemen. But, yeah. uh, uh, it was a good, fun game. Uh, I, I got my phone with me right now because my nephew said he was going to give me a call during the show. Okay. Of course, I told them it's live, but it isn't. Yeah. You know, we do it live because we're right. here and we're, we're at in least person. We think we're alive. Right? And then we'll we'll show it later in the week. But if he has a question, he can ask. But he, he kind of got mad at me yesterday. He got mad at you yesterday. Yeah. I, I can't believe anybody could get mad at you. I know. Me neither. I mean, Especially on a Sunday. <laughs> you know. Especially on a Sunday. So what did you say about his fantasy team or the bison or what would you say well it's more on uh, kind of related to the bison okay I, uh oh were you talking about the, the former quarterback by yeah chance? i uh sent Ooh. out a text to my brother and two uh -oh. nephews and um and i said carson wentz tore acl out for the year that was your prediction oh no it, it was yeah it was well, it wasn't official till today well that Bully, when, when uh, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to try to get ahead of the Ian Rappaports and Mike Florios and all them. So I can just go out there and say that it was official, that I actually talked to the Eagles, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get doctors. Yeah, yeah. Because I can't really get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> so I, I report that, and my my nephew yaps back at me, what are you just saying that so you can be the first one to, to, to report it? I says, uh, no, I just uh, thought I'd let you know. And he, he didn't like the fact that I was bearing bad news. Ah, oh, you know. Well, I, I've got a student who is a big Eagles fan. He's been toting the Eagles. He's, been, he's had the, the stocking cap and the jersey for years. It's not something new. He's not jumping on the bandwagon. And when he came to class today, 
we were talking, I don't know what we were talking about. And I said, hey, are you just jibber jabbering so you can avoid the conversation that no. Carson Wentz has torn his ACL? He says, did you hear something? And I took out my phone and I'm not kidding you. It was 11.17 when I took my phone out and at 11.14, the, oh, tweet, yeah. the tweet came out that he had torn his ACL. And he says, you're kidding, right? And I'm like, no. Yeah. So he says, you're enjoying this. And I said, only because you're not a Vikings fan. I said, I'm, we're only doing this because... Yes, we're not enjoying this because somebody got hurt. We're enjoying this because this probably helps the Vikings. So well, it could. Foles isn't a bad quarterback. No. Carson Wentz is probably the best in the <coughs> NFC at least. And uh, what, about your, what yeah. about your boy Jared Goff? Jared played okay, not nothing great, but uh, you know, Eagles beat him with a backup quarterback in LA. In LA, uh, both I'm teams giving that. up double digit thirty some points. So. Uh, um, I think it helps the Vikings as far as having a chance to win on the road in Philly, which is Ooh, kind of you're like already a, you're already. It's well, a, it's just do look at the Eagles' remaining schedule. I mean, yeah. they play the Giants next week. I think That's a win. Got, yeah, they, I think they got uh, another week sister uh, as well. I think they got one. So it's a done deal. So you, the the Vikings. I think so. Vikings are probably going to lose one more too. So they're probably going to end up twelve and four. Which because you already be, have said that the Packers are going to beat them. Well, no, you Aaron said, Rodgers. You said that. Well. If Aaron Rodgers is there. Where did I say it at? You said it right, sitting right in that chair right there about three weeks ago that when Aaron Rodgers comes back, you picked him up for your fantasy team because he was going to win the last three games. That's what you said. Really? Just, you well, said that. I think those have been deleted from the files. So <laughs> if I did say it, I – but uh, I, Aaron Rodgers was talked about today. And on, on, he is on, not, your, on your sports radio no, driving around? Yeah, on sports okay. talk. And yeah. he, he has not been uh, – Given the go-ahead yet, he still has to pass all the tests, and if the bones aren't bone isn't strong enough, he will not play. Okay. So they're do, do, getting all the analysis back on those, and they aren't they aren't going to think about it. I mean, I hope he plays for the fact of my fantasy football team, but think about it. Their line is shot. Their offensive line, even with all the injuries we just got, is worse than ours. Okay, their defense is a mess. They lost two more defensive backs yesterday who aren't going to be playing. So they're down to their second, third, and fourth stringers in the defensive backfield. So their defense is a mess. Defense's line is shot. So why would they rush them back to possibly make a run and get in a five or six seed and then get knocked out once? You know, I know it's a big deal to make the playoffs, but uh, this team isn't going anywhere anyway. So Okay. My opinion. What else happened yesterday in the NFL as long as we're – on that topic, uh, I, I enjoyed the. I got to see the end of the uh, Buffalo uh, oh, yeah. Jets game in the. Oh, I don't know. What would you guess? Four inches, five inches, six mm. inches of snow on the field. All of that. It, uh, uh, I saw well, Sean McCoy running because they brought. They put it on TV after the game was over. The the, the I don't know which game finished been up. The, the Packers the game. Yeah, it might have been the matter. Vikings game. Anyways, they showed it, and uh, well, Sean McCoy was trying to run to the end zone. <laughs> And he, he did get clear, and he was trudging. I remember me and my brother Gerald used to play out in five, six inches of snow, and and uh, we weren't as fast as LaShawn McCoy, but he, he looked like me and my brother trying to run. Yeah, it was. It was. It's like Ralphie fun. Boy in the movie. Uh, what's that? Christmas. Jeez. <laughs> With all the great big uh, Michelin Man outfit he has on for a snowmobile suit. Yeah. So that's kind of what it was like. It was it was fun to watch. I wish I would have got to watch the whole game, but uh, you know, it wasn't much fun for the kickers. And no, no, and I think the field goal kicker from Buffalo was happy he didn't have to come out and try to kick yeah. the winning field goal in that uh, to see what was going to happen. So but another big one I thought was Jacksonville knocking off Seattle in Jacksonville. It's, it's kind of ironic that uh, Michael Bennett was interviewed last year and he he said, "Yeah, almost all of our games are nowadays are." Two to three point differences, except if you get to play Jacksonville. Ooh! So he said that last year. Of course, Jacksonville uh, had that recorded, taped in the locker room before the game, <laughs> and uh, that game was much worse than thirty twenty four. Jacksonville dominated that game, and then at the end, uh, uh, there was some shenanigans, and uh, they tried teacupping or the center. Teacup, okay. You know how they kneel down for the winning. Uh, uh, last uh -huh. minute, and, and the, one of the players got into it with the crowd because they were throwing stuff at him as he was, got ejected, and then he was going to try to jump up into the stands and go after the fans, and 
So it was a real fun, interesting end there in uh, yeah. uh, Jacksonville. But Jacksonville's for real. I mean, they, they got a good offense. Fournette helps them on, at the running back position. Bortles has been playing better. So uh, uh, I think they're a step above Tennessee. Tennessee looked bad yesterday. Okay. Uh, I did not watch a single down of Pittsburgh and the Ravens. Is that who they played? Really? I, I don't even know. Gosh. Honestly. I saw the score. Here, here's how my, my wife's out of town. So I got Eli. Eli's busy. He's watching Paw Patrol and Peppa Pig and whatever else. Mm -hmm. And the Wild came on at what eight o'clock? Wild were on at eight. About eight o'clock yeah. last night. So bath, pajamas, get him into bed. I'm in bed, trying to calm him down. He's watching his Kindle to kind of zone out. And I've got the Wild on on, on my phone, and I fall asleep. And I wake up to find out that they're going to overtime. You think I can stay awake for the overtime? No. No. And so then I'm like, oh, the football game was on. I wonder what's going on with the football game. There was less than a minute left. It was 38-36. And then I found out this morning I couldn't even stay awake for the end of that. That they won and wow. kicked the field goal. So it was a tough, it was a tough Sunday night for Tim Pretty, in, his, uh, in his sports uh, watching. Sounds similar. But the Timberwolves won. Similar to me is, you know, bath. Then I jumped into my pajamas. <laughs> And then I went on to my lounger. Okay. No, and then I watched one of the best football games of the year. Is it? It was it that good? I'm well, that there's good? reasons too. I mean, fantasy football again. It's and dear into my life, which is sad. But my son-in-law, I called him up. I said, "You got a four percent chance of winning." A four percent? Yeah. I said, but in our league, you can only play a guy 11 times, like huh? we've talked about. Well, right. he's already played. He's got Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger on his team. He's already. I said, you're better off. off just pulling them out, get them out of the roster, put in Cutler and Ben Watts, and take the loss and move on to next week. He said, yeah, I was going to do that. The game isn't till tomorrow, oh, is it? Gosh. I said, no, Mike, it's tonight. He, he, he just doesn't have it. <laughs> you know. He's, 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 he's my wife. My wife married. Boom. My my wife married into the family. I mean, I can't take responsibility. He said, "Well, the game ain't till tomorrow." And I said, "Mike, it starts in ten minutes. You got five minutes to change your lineup." And it sounded like he was playing with the kids, having a good time. So I kind of, well, I feel bad, but no, okay, I got to run. I'll get on the computer and change it. I said, "Good." He never got there in time. He went to change and it was 726. He had to have it done by 725, so he never got to change and take Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown out. And they had a huge night. 530 <laughs> yards passing. For Roethlisberger? <laughs> yeah, which is by far the best. 230 yards receiving. Whoa. by a, Between them, they had like 750 yards, which equates to, in our league, about... 48 points, plus wow. Roethlisberger had two touchdown passes, had another eight. You aren't going to believe this when I tell you. He beat you? No, he beat Mark Corbett's team hunt by four yards. Wow. So if he's accumulating 750 yards, right, plus yeah. two touchdowns, it wasn't 745. If it would have been, he would have lost. But 750, he won by four yards. Now, just take me now. I texted him. I said, if you would have not, if you would have made that change, <laughs> I would have felt about this big because I was I was the one that tried to help him and remind him, you know, he got a four percent chance, and plus Mark had Mike Wallace going. So so the computer had this calculated at this point yeah. with everything that's been done and what you have left. Well, you have a four. The computer chance. had their little calculation. Then we had the bully calculation, which was the bull four percent. So he had very little chance. And uh, did you do that with a slide rule by chance? Yeah, but it was crazy. So I didn't dare stop and see Mark today because uh, he wouldn't have been really in a good mood to talk. No. And uh, I felt bad, but now he knows how I feel on a weekly basis. Very I got smoked by Sandbeck, Brucey and Marie and them, and, and it, all of a sudden Jordan Howard becomes good. Uh, all, all his players had their best games of the year. When they play bowling. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. But let's get off fantasy football. Let's get off fantasy. I let's talk it. about the Wild. Okay. You, uh, I think last week when we taped our show, you said something about Bruce Boudreau saying they asked him what they needed to do on the on the road trip to the West Coast. Yeah. And he said they needed to come home with six points. Mm -hmm. They accomplished that, right? No. No, we got five. Four. Four. They didn't in the game they lost, Ringer, they were up two to one. He gave up four unanswered in the third against yep. LA. That was on when or Tuesday. Yeah, and I yeah, thought yeah. Uh, they were the better team in all three of them. And less the last eight minutes last night, but 
Um, the refs got involved, of course. I saw a tweet about that. Whenever you get up in the NHL by more than two goals, you will not get a call in your favor. And the refs are looking for everything that you're doing. There was a number of instances where the Wild just small little pokes like that, arm goes up, hooking, slashing. And there was another one where, where Stahl was just blatantly cross-checked into the net of the San Jose by Burns. Nothing. It's like, why don't they? And I mean, we've had this discussion about cross-checks. Yeah. Why they don't want to call that in the NA, That's dangerous. That ends careers. Yeah, I'll little ask, hooks I'll, don't I'll, end I'll, careers. I'll, I'll ask it this way. They've gotten big into the slash across the hand. But they aren't real slashes either. They're, no. they're little. So, so I'm saying, you played hockey. I didn't. You would agree with me. A cross-check in the back oh. is way more painful than a, a slash on the hand. Am I, I'm... Yeah, plus if you're not ready... You know, you should put yourself close against the boards. What I see a lot of days is the players know the rules, so they, they're too far away from the boards. Get, get near the boards. That way when you do get unexpected yeah, hits, you're going to hit the glass before you can get hurt. But nowadays, I mean, they, they're far away. They get that cross check. You can end up with your chin hitting the top of that, that board. Yeah, sure. uh, a lot of bad things can happen. And, and for some reason, and I, I can't believe the NHL says don't call cross checks. Okay, yeah. but for some reason they don't call it. Watching a game, Ringer, and it, you can call about 10 of them blatant co- cross checks that are never called in any I'll, I'll ask this question this way. Is it because those cross checks happen in front of the net and there's a different set of laws when you're standing in front of the net or alongside of the net than if you're out at the blue line or center ice or wherever? Is it the cross check, quote unquote, legal because you're trying to stand in front of the goalie? So, one way to get you out of there is the cross check. Yeah, I'm asking. In, in most cases, they are along the boards. As, as players are cycling around the board area, right. that's when most of them happen. Okay. Actually, they know because th- it turns into interference calls if they cross check in front of the net while the puck's coming in. So, the, the players kind of stay away from you know, that because okay. they get interference calls. Where the cross-checking happens a lot in front of the net is after the whistle blows. And then All of a sudden, the guys stand there and you give them a shot. Watch. After every whistle, next time you're watching a game, after every whistle, you'll see a shot here or a rub in the face or, or what have you. And, and they're along the board area where you're cycling. You'll see little jabs. And they're small little jabs, but they're right here. And I still say to this day the reason Parisi's back issues are there or is because of he's taken so many of those cross checks. So, in essence, uh, they got to get rid of that. That's to me, is worse than any hook or slash. Uh, it can end careers. And uh, I think one uh, uh, Zach Parise's is, is a prime example. Sure. So what, uh, what's going on in the NHL that I need to know about that I'm not... Well, right now the wild, the wild are a playoff team based on number of games played and points. Uh, them, Chicago, uh, Calgary, Dallas, uh, everybody, they're all locked in there within okay. a point of each other. And Vancouver, and there's, there's like a bunch of teams between 32 and 33 points, probably seven teams. Wild have played the last amount of games, so that's why they're, they're in. But uh, um, they played better in the last five or six games. And I watched the game again this morning when I got up at, at 6, 6.30, and I I'd watched it close, and I saw a lot of good things. They're, if you notice on their power play now, they're going full speed. And uh, uh, earlier in the year, they were going half speed. I think Suter finally was told by the coaches, we need you going at full. And that way, everybody is in flow. And that way, if they do have to dump it in, at least they got some guys going at full speed to go get the puck. Uh, one, one goal that I did see last night, Suter came around the yeah. net. He came firing down the left-hand side and basically came around. I don't know what the goaltender was doing if he was trying some – Circus act save or something. I don't know exactly what he was doing, but uh, Saul couldn't can't get an easier goal than that one. No, and uh, like I was saying, shoot like three times. <laughs> I don't know why Suter wasn't shooting there. But he had basically a wide open net himself. He most nonchalantly carries around the net, and you know Stahl again with a three point night last night. He's probably been their most steady player uh, off on the ice. Uh, does have some giveaways here and there, but that's fine and. Uh, I, I like the team now again. I'm kind of buddies with them, okay. except for Stewart, who sat out last night. So, so who's which made who, me happy? Yeah. So who's the who's the surprise team? Who who's who's sitting up at the top of the of one of the divisions or the or the conferences that we, that may be surprising? Because I I'll be honest with you, I haven't looked at the NHL standings probably in two weeks. Okay. To most NHL fans, it would be Winnipeg and New Jersey. Okay. But to me, that, those aren't surprises. 
Okay, I, I thought Winnipeg going into the season was was an easy top three yep. in, in the in the yep. central. You didn't say that. And uh, I mean, they're big, strong. They got six high end forwards. They got four or five high end defensemen. They got the, the question mark was kind of their goaltending. Um, so I, I think that I think Chicago in a bad way, but I did say they were going to miss playoffs this year, and right now they are out of the playoffs. But I wasn't expecting them to drop that far. Okay. So we'll see if they can get her going here in the second half. I, I think they got a lot of young guys in the second and third line. They're third pair D, and then they go to Chicago on Sunday. So four big games, wow. and uh, I expect three wins out of there. <clears throat> Where would you like to go next? Where do you want to go? Well, well I want to go home. Do you want you want to talk? Go for, you want to talk? Go for basketball? Uh, we can dabble. A, a severely disappointing loss yesterday. Uh, drop out of the top twenty-five. Not surprising. Today. Not surprising. Uh, as I was perusing my tweets after school, and uh, you say they're not that good. No. I, Can I, they I, be good? I don't. I don't know. I think the loss of Curry was a big loss. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they aren't good enough to run too deep at, at the top forward positions. I mean, Mir Coffey's kind of a tweener. So you got Lynch and Murphy, and, and they're always in fall trouble, and that's why Curry was so good coming in for them guys. And Kanati, Kan Kanati or whatever, he, he's dealt with concussion, and about his, his play has dropped. Fitzgerald isn't as good as they thought he was going to be. Can, can, uh, I think there's three high school kids right now that they wish they could pull out of high school and move up. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they yeah. signed with you. Why can't they bring them up for the Niners? <laughs> here's 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 my my question. Okay. And I haven't had got to watch them the last couple of games, but do you feel like they don't have an identity mm -hmm. of what they are, what they want to be? It seems like sometimes I see them. They want to be a running team, mm -hmm. and then they want to do the half court thing mm -hmm. for Murph and blah, blah, blah. And it just seems like they they. I don't know, like the mixture of the guys. They don't. This guy wants to go fast. This mm -hmm. guy wants to go medium slow. This guy wants to plod along, and they they got them all on the same floor at the same time. And so one guy wants to zip and Dupree and blah. blah, blah. It's just McPree. I think Dupree's been probably their their Marcus. Uh, uh, is that his name? Dupree. Uh, no. Dupree. Uh, McBrayer, right? McBrayer. McBrayer, yeah. Anyways, I think he's been their steadiest well, player. I agree, but it just seems like they're not all on the same page on what they're trying to accomplish. And I, I, I my Isn't feeling that your point is, guards? I have the feeling that when they finally get that figured out, what they're going to do, what they're going to be, I think they can be a dangerous team. I think they can make some wins. I think they can make a run at it. But right now, it seems like they're just kind of like the Timberwolves. They're kind of lost. Well, and you, know, you, you brought up the t Jimmy Butler keeps saying we're what we're, we're they're sixteen and eleven. We're twenty seven games in the season. We're almost a third of the way through the season, and he's still saying. And I've said this before. We're not close. When are we going to start playing defense as a team? Mm -hmm. And I think Jimmy's finally kind of given up and said, "Well, we're not going to play team defense. So I better start scoring down on the other end. I better take the ball over and, and start mm -hmm. making some buckets because Wiggins last night was three to for twelve at the end of the game." Uh, Carl Anthony Towns did have 28 uh, uh, in the game last night, I saw, but Jimmy Butler took that game over in the fourth quarter and mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, uh, you're exactly hit it, and I think both both issues on both teams, the Gophers and the Timberwolves. Nate Mason's a good guard. Is he elite? No. Okay, and then you you have him running the point, and all of a sudden you got the kamikaze guy, <laughs> Isaiah Washington, who's going 180 miles an hour, and, and, and nobody knows what he's doing. He's launching up threes like he thinks he's still in high school. Yeah. Um, a lot of immaturity on his game, so uh, I think there's issues there, and, and uh, it's unfortunate that the bench uh, hurt, can't, can't help him. Uh, uh, Kanati or whatever, how you pronounce it, ain't helping. Fitzgerald isn't helping, so their bench is down to like one guy, the Isaiah uh, uh, Washington, but he's he's out of control. So uh, I think Patino has some big concerns. I think the best thing maybe is just keep playing them and hopefully they get better. But uh, right yeah, now they're they're not getting better. But let's hope that they get better and, and soon because they got Drake tonight. So uh, that that could be a tougher game than people think, and we'll see uh, if they could beat the Drake. What are they, the Drake Drakes? 
What's her nickname? Uh, I, I think it's Bulldogs, to be honest with you. The Drake Bulldogs? I think it is the Drake Where's Bulldogs. Where's Drake Bulldogs from? I know they got Drake a, is in got, Iowa. And they got a coach that played at, or coaching at D. LaSalle here the past 10 years. Why did he go to Drake? Is that part of a, like, bring a recruit well, with he, you yeah, type he, coach? He, he'd done everything that he could in Minnesota. No, but did he, like, leave D. LaSalle, D. LaSalle bring one of the best D. LaSalle players to Drake? I don't know. Did, that's usually how that I, works. I don't know if that happened or not. It's like honest. Mr. Manning when Danny Manning went to Kansas. His yeah. dad, his dad just happened to get an yeah, assistant get a, get coaching assistant job. Coaching job, sure. So, yeah. so anyways, could, uh, Boston College knocked off Duke. So, new number yeah. one team is this team very who I think is just like the Gophers, lacking depth, are good at guard, but you know, Arizona State has probably the best guard in the country, but. Uh, Arizona's number one for now. Dick Vantel made an interesting point. Okay. He said, don't make these uh, um, polls until after New Year's. I agree. Because they don't mean a thing right now. I agree. But do polls ever mean a thing until no. the end? No. It, it, it really nothing anymore as far as college basketball is concerned because they don't even look at it for who's making the top 64 anyway. There's bracketology, yep. uh, bracketology excuse me. Similar to got, hockey, NCAA yeah. hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the mystery's taken out of the NCAA hockey. I yeah. mean, with the, with the pairwise, it's, here's a here's a formula, here's the number, it's done. So, you got anything about college hockey? You know, we kind of come to the third way, third of the way, you know, halfway mark. Mal Gophers got swept by Ohio State, a, a much lesser team, so there's problems in Dinky Town again with the hockey team. Sure. Underachieving. Um, I don't like the chemistry on that team either. I, just a bad. How about St. Cloud State, North Dakota? They nice get a, series. Get a split. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I got to watch a little bit, of it, little bit of it Friday night when I got home. I got to watch the overtime and the yep. and the one shot shootout, which just blew me away. Thing is, with North Dakota, they're they're beating teams and and they're young. I mean, they're, they're half to three quarters of their roster are freshmen and sophomores. So uh, if they can keep them all there next year, I mean, they're probably one year away. But uh, they're still top five, six team in the country, and um, I like the coach. I like the North Dakota coach. Knows how to coach. Knows how to get guys up for games. Big deal. Uchi is riding a, riding a uh, reputation, in my opinion. Who could the Gophers bring in to remedy that? Well, they say Gensel's probably ready. Uh, one of the assistants, but he's off the he's off the tree. He's he's part of the uh, yeah. the, the tree from Uchi. So uh, I don't know. There's talk of Hastings. That's that man, Cato State, who used to be a Gopher coach. Um, how about Ben Gordon? Why not Ben He's Gordon? He's coaching uh, in the USHL. I'm not sure where he is. In Chicago, maybe. But uh, he's, he's coaching there. He uh, uh, was involved with the coaching program last year at the U. Um, maybe Garrett Raboy. He's the main recruiter at uh, St. Cloud State. State. Again, I'm kind of going off uh, uh, names yeah, from names the Falls, you know, which sure. is good. But I think Garrett's going to end up with uh, somewhere with a, a head coaching job here within the next 10 years. And it takes time. You know, a lot of these head coaches well, are in their 40s and 50s before they even get hired. So, Absolutely. Anyways, where else? Anywhere else? Oh, I know what else I was going to ask you. So what do you think of the uh, Stanton starting at signing with the Yankees oh, uh, situation? That's a lethal line. And they didn't give up anything. Well, that, okay, I'm, Sterling, I haven't really talked about it with anybody else, but I'm like, they got him for us for a song, didn't they? And they even said two lower end minor leaguers, not even the top end, not even top ten uh, minor leaguers. Sterling Castro. Collusion. Okay. Collusion. Well, let's get the problem the with it. Let's get the Yankees back on TV. So we'll. Well, they got better offers from San Francisco and the Cardinals, so but Giancarlo could turn down any trade. He didn't want to go to St. Louis or San Francisco. Why, why do you think he didn't want to go to St. Louis? Just opinion. You know, it's, it's such a winning franchise. I don't know. I, you know, I think he likes the bright lights, the big city. I mean, it was either L.A. or so, the Yankees so, from the so get-go. So you're saying I can start hating him now? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's going to be him and Judge. and. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I hope that they strike out about 800 times combined next season. Well, good pitching will still uh, combined. Good pitching will still beat uh, good okay. hitting. So, uh, I don't know. The Astros still have that good pitching. So, Indians still have good pitching. Twins are missing a few yet, uh, but they got some good bats, and uh, I don't know anything about these players they got in the the 
rule five or whatever? Well, whatever it is, they give a team some extra money so they could have bid on uh, oh. this Japanese guy. And he's going ended up uh, going to the Los Angeles uh, Was the Angels, Angels, Angels at Anaheim. So he signed there. Um, the, the, the Twins picked up a couple prospects that doesn't look like, you know, real big helpers. Okay. But, um, anyways, that's that. What else? Q&A? Yeah, we can do Q&A. We can well, keep been waiting all day. Yeah. He's got to have something for us. I bet you it's men's basketball. Oh, Favorite for the Super Bowl. Ooh, that's a good one. Well, boy, I'll tell you that that with with Carson Wentz going down officially for the season today, that opens up that opens up the NFC, obviously. I think I, the Vikings. You still think oh, the Vikings? Absolutely. If they can get their offensive line healthy. Yeah, they, say uh, that's an like, issue. If that's they can an get issue. their offensive line. The Rams healthy. got beat two out of their last three games. Who? The Rams. The Rams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the it was the Eagles and the in the Vikings. I mean, those were. The, oh, you t you still think the Eagles are still? Well, the I still think. I mean, till t till what happened yesterday, the Eagles were the favorite. Oh yeah. Running away, you. I think you said that. Mm -hmm. um, so th it's kind of a wide back. I think it's I think it's wide open. You know, Carolina, Atlanta, New Orleans. You could see all three of them get in. Um, well, you know, Seattle. The is, how many how many times in the last five years has a number six seed made a run yeah. all the way to the Super Bowl? Because they get healthy at the right time, and you were just talking about how everybody's nicked up and losing defensive backs and yep. offensive. I mean, it's it, it, who who's going to be healthy come January sixth is going to have a lot to say about it. Well, I did hear today Riley Reef's ankle isn't as bad as first thought. Okay, so that's good news. That is great. News. Uh, if he can miss just one game, uh, they're still saying he possibly could play this week, but. Remmers should be ready to come back, so uh, we pick up one there, and we still got Hill, who's been playing out playing Remmers. That's kind of why they left Remmers right. alone. And yeah, you don't want to start getting guys injured. So I would say the Vikings to answer your question. Vikings. Of course, New England. I mean, hey, see, we're, I won't ever go away from that team. They'll win by thirty tonight. Kai, you're gonna you're you're gonna you're gonna bring up all these bad things that the Vikings have done because of their place kicker. You uh, know what? If he changed, I got a friend go down to a, a field goal and, and something will happen. Yeah, like Blair Walsh. It. You know, if he changed his first name, I mean, Kai, really, change it to like Roger Lloyd. <laughs> you know, Mike. Tim? Mike would be great. I, oh. I really think Mike Forbath. That would I mean, be, Kai. be outstanding. Who sits at home and says, okay, honey, we're going to name our kid Kai. Is that with an, just K-I? No, we're going to put an A in there. There you go. K-A-I. You know? So, yeah. If it they really mess with people's yeah, minds, Yeah, right? they just. Like if, putting an M, second M on. But on interesting, you mentioned the kicker. I mean, you, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. What else, Floyd? It was a good one. That is a good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. By the way, right I, now it's question of the day. Patriots. I can go Patriots Vikings, but I yeah I the NFC is. You don't you don't like Pittsburgh after what they did last night? No. No, I dislike them more or what because, they did. Because they, they should have lost. Because they, they were down by eleven with four their minutes. Gave up thirty eight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they've given up quite a few. Who'd they play the last game before that? They, to Cincinnati. And they gave up 20 to them right away. Yeah, they, they were, were right running 21. all over them until my boy Joe Mixon got hurt. Then things quit. That's right. So I don't like Pittsburgh because their defense, those defensive backs. I, don't like I mean, Pittsburgh, period, anyway. But that's I could play defensive back. What else? Uh, go for football. What do you think of the recruiting? Ooh. I haven't heard we don't anything. Have a, yeah, we I got, have not heard anything on the go for recruiting. What have you heard? Uh, they recruited a big couple of offensive linemen. Big offensive linemen. They, they recruited 700 pounds of fun and excitement. Nice. And they, All on the offensive line. They were recruited by other. Yeah. They're, one's a four star, and the other two are three star recruits, which four star for the Gophers is huge. Yeah. And yeah. one goes over 400 pounds. Ooh. And can dunk a basketball. Ooh. And has athletic. Yeah, wow. and then uh, we got that quarterback, of course, who looks like he could be kind of a, he's kind of a pretty boy, like a Mayfield, a Baker Mayfield, but I think you've got to have a good-looking quarterback. I think that's important. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, the, the, the guys won't block for him if he ain't cute, or what are you trying well, to say? Well, not mean, cute. Handsome? Did I say cute? Handsome? No, yeah, it has that, you know, has that it. What is, what is this? Well, you know, he has it. Yeah. Well, we're guys. I don't know exactly if I should know what it is, but 
Well, it's Let's just. Uh, you guys know over it? No? Well, you know, you got, a lot of times a quarterback is very confident and cocky. So even if he's average looking, he's going to look better looking because he's glaring with confidence. Does that make well, sense? Well, you are a quarterback, so you ought to know, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, I glared with confidence, but I also glared with uh, somewhat suspect looks. <laughs> there, the Joe there, Namath. There's a perfect example. Roman Gabriel, Joe Namath. You know, Terry Bradshaw. Did I just put Terry Bradshaw <laughs> out of that group? But, uh, no, I just always think your, your quarterbacks are usually pretty good-looking guys. I don't know why I'm doing this, why I'm saying this. Yeah. All right, but, what else you got for us, Light? Anything? <clears throat> That's it. And this is just water. Okay. Hey, Thanks. I, I will. I will say this. Mm -hmm. Extremely busy weekend locally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I. I. I sent the text out to Preston at the radio station last night. This is basically what I said to him. This is including Fort Francis hockey now mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Four basketball, three hockey games on Friday. Three basketball, three hockey on Saturday. The Musky boys played on Saturday. There was curling. I said you had. Uh, the Lakers played twice this weekend. I said, everything's going on. you got to get out there, people, and then support these kids yeah. al al along the way. Uh, these kids are, are doing amazing things. And I know I told you on Saturday night, and I'll say it right here, I was at the Rainy River basketball game. Whether you love basketball or not, everybody likes sports, and everybody likes watching the top ten. Rainy River's got a kid out of, out of the Twin Cities that can, he's 6'4", he's a Division II prospect, can absolutely jump out of the building. This is no I mean, this is no exaggeration. He got a steal on a breakaway, caught it in the backcourt, so he's got 50 feet to decide what he's going to do with it. He gets to the free throw line, he jumps up in the air, he's got the ball in his right hand, through the leg, didn't travel, didn't, didn't have a violation, through the leg, up with the left hand, cups it, and throws it down over his head, and the place went absolutely berserk. And I mean, the kids can cheer and be berserk, mm -hmm. but the adults, me included, we're going berserk because you don't. You can watch it on TV, and you go, "All right, you watch the slam dunk contest," and you go, "Oh, that's that's nice. He can jump out of the building." This this is live, and and, and it, what it's a different animal when you're there, and when you watch somebody who's six four, mm -hmm. and De, and Devarius is six four, uh, you can go out and watch him do that live for five bucks. Go sit in the stands and get a chance to watch a kid like this. Uh, like I said you can go watch these high school kids. The things that they do, the things that they make happen, they make look easy. Um, get out there and enjoy what these kids do. Uh, it makes the winter go faster. They love having you guys in the stands. Come on along and cheer the Broncos, whether they're good, bad, or middle, uh, Vikings, Rainy River, whatever it is, get out there and support these teams. Uh, they'll, they'll appreciate it, and I think it's the right thing to do. I agree with you. I mean, uh, you know, the, the Bronco-Proctor game, I wasn't there for the Hibbing, but we can get more people. I mean, get off your couches, you know, get off the bar stools. You guys can go to the bars after the game, okay, and have a couple of libations. Get out and watch these kids. And I know you all know these kids that are playing. Yeah. They, they, they've had families in, the, in our uh, uh, town for years, whether it's the kids now or their moms and dads. Uh, you know, when they see a lot more people there, it makes them uh, feel good. It makes them feel more part of the community. But if we don't support and give up our five bucks and buy some concessionaire, concessionaire stuff, and it's a pretty uh, inexpensive $10 a day if you go down to Bronco Arena, Falls uh, Gymnasium, just get out there and support. Sit in those stands and, and enjoy the... Well, enjoy and I think the, most of the people in town... We're, we're a part of a part of Bronco sports along yeah. the way, and I know some people have said to me even this winter so far, well, why why can't they be like the like the hockey teams were in the '60s and the '70s, and why can't the basketball teams be like what? Why 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 does that have to me? Why does that have to be a part of the puzzle? Yes, we all love to go watch somebody win. There's no doubt about that. We can talk about the Vikings, and that's why we sit here every week and discuss good, bad, otherwise. But no. this is this. These are these are your nephews and nieces and kids and and somebody you know. So get out there and support them. And also, Ringer, right on that as an answer to that too is if more people are there, the little kids that are at the game they see more of a full crowd. They're going to say, "Geez, I want to be a Bronco." We don't hear that anymore. Yeah. You know, I want to be a Bronco when I get up, uh, get older. Instead of, "Geez, I can hardly wait to go out to the shack and go hunting," which is a big part big of tradition deal. and families, but. If that's their main thing that they do, I, don't, I want them to be involved in the sports and athletics. And the more kids we have trying out, 
uh, the better our teams get. So, yeah, get out there. Just go, go stand by the glass, and you know you're going to be surprised. You're going to see people you know there, and you're going to catch up on some old times, and and it's a, it's a good, fun, cheap entertainment. I think we said enough on that. I think we did. Thanks, uh, everybody. Don't take us too serious. <clears throat>